primer here, I'm trying to organize my arguments, but I'm also listening to what was said already, and I will start with uh, what Churchill said. Democracy is the worst form of government, but the only one functioning. Why? Because I'm always a bit shocked when I hear, when we talk about Europe, but actually we mean the EU. We talk about certain things as we are the democratic ones and there are others who are less democratic. I do not like that approach. Why? Because we have to, in the EU, and in Europe in general, and as European New Form, we present the entire Europe geographically, we need to think about what are the values of democracy? What do we mean by that? What is behind those flashy words before we start promoting democracy across uh, the borders? And we have to look at our own difficulties that we have within the EU and within our own countries before we can teach others of how to do democracy. So it's a very slippery slope when you speak about democracy. I'll focus rather on what the topic is involving youth in decision-making processes, because that's, for me, a different thing. It's part of the democratic processes that we are involved, but we are involved as citizens, first and foremost, and the need to be involved as citizens. Democracy is based on what I would say, what I was missing with you guys in the debate this morning, is what Voltaire said. I hate, I, I feel disgusted by what you are saying, but I will defend your right to say it. I haven't heard that argument this morning, and I wish I would, because for me it's very important that when we think, when we debate, we think about the basic values of freedom of speech, uh, voting is an important element. Um, accountability was mentioned. I very much like that word because we are accountable. I'm accountable for what I say. You're accountable for what you say. And we need to keep that up. Transparency, openness, inclusiveness, human rights. All those things do not exist without each other. And democracy doesn't exist without them. So in order to have them, we need to look at what is currently the situation. We have decrease of democracy in Europe. What do I mean by that? We have a divide between democratic institutions, between the political parties that are engaged in them and the decision makers against the citizens who feel disenchanted, who feel their voice is not being heard, they are not being respected, um, or they are simply thrown out by the complexity of the decision making processes that exist today. So that's one thing. This is creating the so-called democratic deficit, not only at the EU level, but mostly in our own countries at different levels. What we need to think about is that sustainable democracy depends on participation of all citizens. It depends on the younger generation in particular, but it depends also on civil society and civil society organizations. If you as a young person want to make a change, you know very well that you can start debating, you can start being loud, you can start using your arguments but you know that you cannot do that alone. You need others, you need to network, you need to reach out, you need to organize yourself in order for your voice to be heard. Because as a young person, one person, doesn't matter if you're young or old, you can do a lot, but many of you together can do more. That's why we have created organizations such as the European Youth Forum that does that. It involves young people from grassroots level to the higher level, and it speaks on behalf of the young people towards the institutions to represent the voice of young people. How do we do that? We have a credo that we have followed for the last 16 years. Nothing about us without us. What does that mean? Why am I here 32 presenting youth? Well, because I'm a youth representative, not anymore necessarily a young person, but what I'm saying is something that went through a process with our member organizations where young people are engaged, they were involved, and they give me the mandate to say something. That's very important because as I said in the beginning, I'm accountable for what I say. When we speak about involvement, we need to speak about what 1st of December was mentioned. Three years ago, we have the entry into force of the Lisbon Treaty that speaks directly for the first time about the so-called youth article, involvement of young people in democratic processes of the Union uh, or in Europe in general. And that's the right to democratic participation. We need to exercise that right. We need to be aware of that right. We need to use that right. How do we use that right? Well, first and foremost, the basic right in democratic processes is the right to vote. We have uh, research that shows that 68% of young people aged 16 to 30 in seven EU member states think that citizens' participation is essential to democracy. They also believe that electoral processes are still very much relevant. Even though the abstention rates are high among young people, they still believe that that's the best way of influencing politics, to go out and vote. But, only voting is not enough. In order to be able to vote, you need to first have the right to vote. And not every young person today has the right to vote. 
the European Youth Forum has launched a campaign called Vote at 16, or lowering the voting age to 16. My colleague was saying that under 30s should have a double vote. I disagree. I think everybody deserves an equal vote, regardless of, this, of their position in society, regardless of their status, or regardless of their age. But there's at the moment, due to demographic reasons that we have, due to the fact that older generations are more the subject of the policies, there's a deficiency in terms of how youth-relevant politics is. We usually think that people don't care about youth, they don't understand us, they don't want to understand us, they don't go out and devise policies specifically for us in electoral campaign. However, the proof shows that in Austria, where you have 16-year-olds voting, once the 16-year-old category is part of the electoral, you will have to force your parties to designate specific policies that are reaching out to them. Can, I can easily get an argument saying, yes, but they voted for right-wing parties. Why? Well, the right-wing parties maybe did their homework better than the others and reached out better in communicating what they wanted to present to the young people. But you cannot blame the young people for being stupid because we have older people who can be stupid as well. You have young people that are very clever. So you cannot put and portray to the group of 16-year-old voters all the prejudice you have against young people in general, or the prejudice that can be easily applicable to older people at the same time. So voting at 16 is seen as a potential solution to the problem of low participation of young voters in society, but it has to be coupled with something called citizenship education. What does that mean? It means that in formal education, but also outside formal education, you have the possibility to be informed about the things, to have a chance to decide about the things and really see what responsibility means for the democratic life in Europe. In the end, one final quote, Europe needs to grant young people the rights that fit their duties because there are 16 year olds who pay taxes if they work, but they cannot vote. So let's change that together. Thank you. Thank you very much.